big welcome back to the Nick Elson Show. It's season five, episode 15, and day three of the podcast, a day release week. Uh, an amazing lineup of guests that I've been able to bring you. And today, I'm really excited about this one, actually. Today is a really exciting guest. It's in the shape of the wonderful Gavin Thorpe. Big round of applause. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> A big fan of you. It's like on, on lots of different levels, actually, not just what you stand for, but what you do. And even before we kind of come on uh, and hit record on this, we were talking about kind of how you keep an eye on your your energy and how you're feeling and stuff. But we definitely will move on to all this. But give us a kind of a real high level overview. Who are you? What do you do? And where are you from? Well, who? Are, that's well. That's an existential question, isn't it? Who am I? Yeah, we can go everywhere with this. <laughs> oh my God, that's one of those. Um, well, I'm I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of Talk Club, and uh, and I'm also a fully qualified therapist as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can tell you about talk, how Talk Club began. Or I can, you know, uh, and, and all that. So I'm just turning my notifications off on my emails. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, let me just close this down a minute. Sorry. Uh, keep... and, and just to prove, I mean, my audience knows I don't edit, so everything just stays in. I've forgotten people's names before. We've had the rag and bone man outside shouting out any old iron. <laughs> I've kept it all in. It's all good. <laughs> well, this is real life, isn't it? Things get yeah. in the way. You've got to push them away. This Unfiltered. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm Gavin Thorpe, and I am co-founder and co-CEO of Talk Club. And, uh, and um, yeah, what is Talk Club? Well, um, Talk Club started three and a half years ago, and it started because of this. This document, this amazing documentary called Steve, and you can watch this documentary at stevedocumentary.com. Um, uh, Steve, so Ben Akers, one of the co-founders of Talk Club, um, he lost his childhood best friend, Steve, uh, nearly seven, eight years ago now. And um, uh, he obviously grieving for his friend um, uh, who took his life and, and didn't want to really to do with that grief and decided uh, he worked, he came from an advertising background and obviously he's had a lot of experience in film and decided actually I want to make a documentary about this. Um, you know, got to add, it's about three or four years before Roman Kemp did his documentary. Uh, so Ben did get in there first, and which reminds us of that, uh, which is fair enough. But, um, and ironically, we are doing some work with Roman Kemp now in next really? month. Wow. <laughs> so it's gone full circle. But anyway, that's another story. I'm, I'm going off. Um, so, yeah, so Ben made his documentary uh, because he was just, I think, once, like, like everything, um, suicide is something that happens over here and we don't quite talk about it or know about it, but we know it happens and it's not nice. And we go, OK, let's not talk about that. Let's leave that. Um, and, and Ben obviously was quite shocked at the stats. And as we know, it's every 80, 90 minutes now, someone, a man takes his life in this country. Um and it, it's quite shocking. The biggest killer of men under 50, as we know. And right. so Ben started to hear this stuff. Why is no one talking about this? So he made his documentary. And from that documentary, lots of different people appear in the film. Uh, and there's six of us that, that are involved in the film. I did the music for the film. And um, and they became the co-founders of Talk Club. So when, when Ben finished the film... He, we were we were all sort of sat around after going, what are we going to do next? You know, we've made the film and that's great, but what's the legacy for this? What what you know, we're all like we need it feels like we need to do something rather than just talk about it. What are we going to do? And that's when the idea is, well, why don't we set up some talking groups? Um, we knew that Andy's Man Club is out there and doing its thing, and 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 they're really fantastic charity are doing a lot, um, but they were very much more based up north. Mm -hmm. We thought there's not a lot going on down south. And actually, ironically, the stats for suicide, the the the, the, the most suicides are up north. And second is guess where? In the southwest. Wow. So yeah, we're second wow. in that table, which is obviously not nothing to be proud of, but it's we thought, right, okay, well, we need to do something down south. And that's where we decided, OK, we need to set up some talking clubs down south. Um, and so that's how Talk Club came about, is, is, is because of the Steve documentary. And so the first thing we did, we just thought, let's set up a Facebook group and see what happens. Let's go from there. 
And it was incredible. We it, overnight we had over a thousand men join. But it, it, literally within a week, wow. we had a thousand wow. men in this group. Um, and they were all talking. You know, you imagine people from all over the country, friends of friends had told them about it. And people were going on there saying, you know, I've split up my wife, I'm struggling, I don't know what to do. And all these men support seeing these men supporting strangers. And it was just it was amazing to to witness and be a part of it of this movement that was happening um so we just thought wow this is this is ha- this is working this is happening there's there's men helping each other being vulnerable and talking and so then we thought well let's see if we can do this physically and get some physical talk clubs going and so we set up the very first one in southfield in bristol at the bristol beer factory that's why we've got the inky mural down there that's the very first one that ever started. And I, I think two people turned up to the first one. That was it, you know, sort of word mm-hmm. of mouth. And so we were like, oh, God, what are we doing? This is, oh, no. And then we just kept going and going. And then as the weeks and the months went by, we kept getting more men. And then eventually now we're up to 60 groups around the world. And I say world because we've got we got a group in Sydney and Singapore and, wow. and, and New York and, and, and we're about to set one up in Canada as well. And um, so it's growing, it's grown talk the talking groups wise. And then from that, we set in obviously with lockdown came along, right? Bang in the middle of all this. We're like, oh God. So we decided to do talk and runs. So we set up, uh, uh, we started doing talk and runs because you meet with six people and the same thing worked. So the way the talk club works, it's four rounds. We do how are you out of 10. The second round is um, what are you grateful for? What are the positives in your life at the moment? What is working? And then round three is what you're doing this week for your mental fitness. So we use the language mental fitness. So what are you doing for you this week? And then round four is what's your number now that you're checking out? It's that simple, the rounds. Love and so when we do the runs, we do the same thing. We just check in with our number. We run together in pairs and we can also check on each other. Oh, you mentioned in the check-in that you're struggling with work. What's going on there? Obviously trying to breathe at the same time. Mm. Um, and you can sort of check in that way. And then you can have a checkout at the end as well. So the talk and move, we've just launched talk and skate now. We've got talk and golf, talk and lift, Brilliant. talk and surf we're doing, talk and climb, you name it, talk and football, we're doing it. Talk and ping nice. pong, when I think starting soon. Uh, as a talk and book club as well, which is going to be good. Um, cool. Very so good. So we're doing any way, you know, our mission statement is where men are, we are. We, any way we can get to men, because one thing we realise that not all men want to sit around in a circle and talk, and that's quite daunting for some. Mm. So this is a really good way to get men in and open up. And then fast forward to now, we've now got therapy groups started. So we've gone from talking groups to sports groups to therapy groups run by fully qualified therapists and we just looked that in bristol we've had the first one has been a success and it's great feedback we're now going to launch an online therapy group so people around the country can access that um and as a charity we've we've only been going 18 months so and we've got our own beer we're a charity part of nivea for men um <laughs> you know and we've got lots of amazing things to come which i can't talk to you about because they are top secret but there are some amazing things to happen in the next two months two to three months for christmas right Um, season six you heard it at first season six episode one will be will be gavin talking about this new stuff because he's teased us now uh, do you know what i love talking to you not just when it's recorded but like when we've spoken away from here because you open up so many rabbit holes in terms of conversations i'm not sure where to dive down first the sure. beer thing is an interesting one i was having a we went away to dartmouth in devon uh a while back and i was having a i don't drink alcohol um and uh, i was having a non-alcoholic beer and i saw the bristol beer factory and your stuff on the can and took a picture of it gonna send it off love that i think it's so cool and it i think alcohol is another one of those kind of taboo subjects that's really difficult to approach um not exclusively, but especially with men as well. So yeah. I guess that that kind of opens up the question that what are the barriers to men reaching out for help? Because as you said, you created this environment where you got so much engagement. Why don't people, why don't men engage in the help when they need it? 
<clears throat> Good question. I think they, I think they're a lot. I do, they do a lot more now. I think it's got better actually, and I think I think there's a lot of negative news about that, and I want to squash that a little bit because and- from my experience of Talk Club, and I would have said the same thing probably four years ago prior to Talk Club and becoming <laughs> a therapist. I would say, "Oh, what's the matter with men? They don't talk. God, what's the matter? You know." Ugh. But actually. Um, it's proven of all the talk clubs. And when we had our captain's convention at the weekend, our first one, we took all the captains away um, that volunteered for us around the country to a convention. Uh, 23 captains came, uh, run groups. And uh, it was amazing. And 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 check the check-in we did at the beginning and the check-in. I mean, there was men there crying and being very vulnerable. And I just thought, wow, you know, I felt so emotional witnessing this. There's men here. We were laughing and joking, but but we're also being sensitive and caring. And you know what the key word that came up and everyone used in the group was respect. There was respect there for each other and going, it's okay. There was no piss taking. And I hate the word banter because to me, banter <laughs> is a very fine line between banter and bullying, you know. Yeah. I, so I, I feel a bit uncomfortable with that word because it does cross over. It's fine having a laugh, but not at someone's expense mm. um, because we don't know what's going on for them behind the scenes. And mm. I think that's what I always think about. And so I would say men are more being more vulnerable and finding strength in being open and honest. Like we say, don't man up, open up. And it's so true. And I've seen it with my personal therapy, with my practice. I have a lot of men come to my practice. I've got a waiting list of about six men on it at the moment. And so I am I am noticing men are talking more and want to talk more. And I think because the language we use, we use mental fitness. So we're saying to men, this is not about, this is about staying mentally fit. So going to a talk club is like a gym for the brain. Mm. You don't go to the gym, you know, uh, you go to the gym, you, suddenly, you need to go to the gym all the time. If you just go once once a month, then nothing's going to happen, is it? You know, That's right, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know we all do it, but, yeah, yeah. you know. But if you got, you got to, you got to keep that up. And it's the same with your mental fitness. You got to keep that route, like you said. I, you go swimming, and that mm. really helps you, and that really gets your blood pumping. A good start to the day, and it's the same. It's it's the same as that. It's it's um, measuring yourself and going. That's why we say, you know, how are you out of ten? Check in on yourself in the morning. How am I out of ten today? Actually, what is going on with me? How am I feeling? So I. So to answer that question is, I think actually, I think men are doing. I was going to say doing really well, but I think men mm. are doing. You know, are, are opening up more, and I think we're seeing it with with with, with people like the charities like Andy's Man Club and Talk Club and. There and all these walking groups you see on Instagram, and there's lots of people, lots of men out there who actually who do want to help themselves. So I think we need to give them more credit that actually men do. I think that as a the new man, you know, the 2022 man, um, is 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 more aware that that it's it's you're struggling and that's okay, and and to, to talk about that. I think it's also how how counselling and therapy is framed because whereas before it's had that kind of stigma of you kind of being sent to the loony bin and, and actually I'm very openly shared that even throughout 2021, for example, I used counseling and talking therapy as part of my kind of toolbox to stay mentally fit to use your language. So actually it's not a, it's not something that you need to kind of reach out at the, at the last resort kind of thing. Actually it's a really healthy thing to have that space. And obviously it's solution focused extension of what you do. Yeah. I love the use of mental fitness. And I think because there's this negative association with the term mental health, isn't it? It's that it's always used in the negative. Like, Nick, I have mental health. Yeah, absolutely you do. A hundred percent of us do. Whether it's good or bad, that's a whole different thing. And I think that's that touches on that so nicely to use that term mental fitness. I guess you mentioned the captain's convention. The one thing I wanted to talk to you about was obviously yourself being solution focused in, in the therapeutic sense. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and as you know, I'm not solution focused. I sign posts to you and Talk Club. Um, however, the captains that are in place, very often you see the people that step up to re- go into that position. You see this with mental health first aiders, even team leaders. It's yeah. usually because they've had their own poor experiences of mental health themselves or people around them. 
Is there that real risk of becoming a wounded healer when you put in the position of trying to help people without having the solution behind that within the group? Really good question. Really good question. And I and I totally agree. It's it's really important for us. And I said this at the weekend when I at the captain's convention when we checked in, I said, we are here because we care about you. This mm. is why we're doing this. And this is why we're going to do this every year, have a captain's convention, because we care and love you and mm. really respect everything you give to the charity as a volunteer. But when I do my captain's training, because I train the captains up, one of the first things I'll say in training is plain safety rules. Put mm. the oxygen mask on yourself before you can help others. And that when we hit that home all the time, you've got to look after yourself first. You are the most important person. So look after you before you can help other people. So we are very on top of that as a charity, mm. make sure that our captains, for example, just this morning, I put on the, we've got a WhatsApp captains group. And I said on there this morning, we've got our online therapy group coming up. If any captains want to come on to the therapy group and do the eight weeks therapy, obviously it's free of charge to captains. So I offered that this morning well enough to them to say, if you are struggling, but but I'm not aware of it, and yeah. you do actually, and, and and obviously, you know, we have had a few captains come on and, and do the the therapy stuff because I've gone Very actually, cool. you know what, I'm struggling. So, and we've had some captains go, do you know what, I'm going to step back and not be a captain at the moment because you know I am struggling. And it's like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, step back. Absolutely. Thank you for telling us. Take some time out. And I had it recently with one guy and he's now taking some time out and it was because he's got a young family and he was struggling to fit everything in. So I said, yeah, you know, this drop this for now, focus on your family. He's now coming back and he's, he, you know, he's like, actually I'm in the right space now where I've got the capacity to, to avoid, cause it, it's your time, isn't it? You're giving up your yeah. time for volunteers. So, um, so now they're coming back. So, and we have captain check-ins and all that. And obviously I'm here on call if they ever need to talk to me as well. So it's paramount. It absolutely paramount that um, our captains feel loved and supported. Absolutely. So yeah, that we, we would, we, we, and that's why we have two to three captains in each group. So every talk group oh, right. yep. has, got, has got two to three captains. So it's not all on one person so yeah. that if they do want to have a week off. They can, and they can go, do you know what? About a bad, you know, but actually saying that if they've had a bad week, they normally want to come. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but if they, but you know, someone said that the other day, they said, oh, I haven't been for two weeks, I really missed it. And oh, and so it's more about obviously life admin really gets in the way, doesn't yeah. it? That truth life admin gets in the way and it's like oh kids have got swimming kids have got this so wife's got yoga and so i can't make it so it's fine you know but that's as i say that's what we're about is supporting supporting people so um, yeah and it's so refreshing to hear the the support you offer i, I think it's, it's massively underestimated that if you give people that platform of trust and support and they feel safe that people will share anything with anyone as yeah. long as they have trust and rapport with that person so actually yeah. in this example your captains will have more rapport with the people that they're talking to than even their gp because no longer do we have that familial relationship with the gp yeah the relationship with the counselor is very different because it's not public facing in that sense necessarily so yeah you do have big heavy conversations and it's great to hear that you're kind of protecting them and safeguarding them as well absolutely it's it, it it's the most and i say it all the time to them you know it's the most important thing when we do the training we hit home about plain safety rules uh and 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 i and i practice what i preach i said to you before we checked in this morning i felt quite overwhelmed with all the emails and all the things i've got to do today so yeah. i thought you know what i'm going to take an hour off this morning and i'm not going to look at my email and i'm actually going to book a massage for later on this week and i'm going to have a bit of chill time and have a coffee and stare out the window for a bit and I, it, was quite, it was quite i quite missed staring out the window and it was just nice just staring off into space and just being in this moment and it lifted my numbers you know i woke up at probably a 6.5 yeah lifted me up to an eight so self-care it's about taking care of the self first before we can look after other people and that's that's Absolutely. why we have those the whatsapp group and our own online community the, the men can check in at any time and um and they check in on each other we i, I, I know i know because we've got a captain's group you can see them you know if someone says oh you know i've had a bad week and you can see them all going oh you know 
keep going we're here for you and you know so yeah someone posted a day that oh i can't i can't captain this week and someone else do it yeah i can come and help you know it's an amazing community it, and that's what we're building it's a community it's incredible. it's incredible to be a part of it really is it's, it's a privilege Absolutely. And I think it's also important to recognise that kind of support that not only that you give each other, but also externally as well. Great organisation to just culturally kind of be around as well. You've got a great vibe, great brand image as well. It's just what you see all the way through is what you're actually hearing on this podcast today, you know, genuinely. Um, so all the links to Talk Club and to Gavin will be in uh, in the bio. And please do reach out. I'm sure Gavin and Talk Club would be great to, to hear from you. Grateful to hear from you. Um, yeah. I think that is really important to recognise, though, in, in terms of how this works. And like you said, who looks after the people who looks after people and the fact that that's taken into account. And that the number system is so powerfully simple. And that's a huge compliment, by the way, because it's with any form of transformation or recovery or progress, it, it very often can be quite heavy and overwhelming and daunting to take on these kind of periods of transformation, whatever you want to call that thing. But the numbers keeps it really simple. And it, it's kind of very similar to that kind of battery analogy that actually the, the energy that goes into a day. And like you said, you woke up a little bit lower maybe than you usually did. So actually you you changed your day accordingly wherever possible. Yeah. And and that comes down to, I guess, self-awareness and, and, and knowing what nourishes you and what depletes you. And mm. I think that's a really important lesson for people to learn, actually. Um mm how we can do that thing and, and working out what parts of our life actually give us energy uh, yeah. and what doesn't. I, I mean, reaching out to, to counselling or, or therapy anyway, um, I guess other barriers could be around uh, financial or costs, especially given the cost of living crisis at the moment. So mm. what you're providing people is an amazing platform through Talk Club. Thank you. But I also want to know, I also want to mention, and it's worth mentioning that the the cost of private therapy is very often a lot less than people would assume because their own version of therapy in, in counseling is kind of watching The Sopranos or something on TV, thinking it's going to be in a big maple docked kind of office with best. It's not like that anymore, is it? I think, especially with the rise of virtual working too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but that's the reason why we we started talk club therapy groups is because we were very aware that we were getting men come to the talking groups, which is free. I like to add the, the mm. talk move and the therapy talking groups are free to attend. Um, but we were getting men come to the groups and their numbers were low and they were struggling. And obviously we were signposted. You know, I trained the captains to signpost and they were signposting them to BACP, you know, British Association of Counts Psychotherapy. Mm. Um and obviously Samaritans and GPs and, and whoever, uh, and Hub of Hope. If you haven't heard of Hub of Hope, they're a fantastic Hub of Hope. Okay. Um, and I, I recommend them to everybody because they're, they're a, it's, a, it's an app and it's a desktop. Um, Hub of Hope and, and Talk Club are on there. But if you, for example, if you live in, you know, Liverpool and you, and you, and you suffer with depression, you can type in Liverpool depression and it go, boop, here you go. Here's all the resources in Liverpool that will help you with your depression. And whether it be talking groups, walking groups, whatever it may be, it's amazing. And that's why it's called Hub of Hope. So it's fantastic. And I, and Thank I, you so I, much. That's a great tip. Thank you. It's, great, it's a great app because it could just, whatever it is. And the talk clubs are in there, so they pop up. But we obviously were signposting people to all these great apps and things. But of course, like all these things, people are going, oh, that's great. But I can't see a counsellor because there's no room because they've got a, they've got a form of... I mean, I, I know someone who's just got some CBT on NHS. It's taken 14 months. Yeah. So it's a long waiting list for, 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 for the NHS, which is understandable. And so that's when we thought, well, why did we are a doing charity? And this is what I tell people. We are an action doing charity. We are not about awareness. There's so much awareness out there that <laughs> it's, I think we're all about enough of awareness right now. I think we're about, let's stop, let's stop doing the awareness and let's start the doing. OK, yeah. so that's where Talk Club comes in. And I think that's what we're really good at is going, do you know what? We're going to do something about this. And that's how Talk Club started because of the Steve film, as I said. We went, right, 
men are killing themselves. What are we going to do? Let's get them talking. Let's get them running. Let's get them. So that's why the therapy groups happen is we thought there's men here who can't access therapy. Mm. And also there's men there who can't afford therapy. Mm. And so we set up the therapy groups and thought, well, if we can see six men at a time, brilliant. That's six men that have been, that are, you know, being seen and, and supported. And we only charge six pound 25 a session. So it's, ridiculously cheap compared to obviously therapy yeah uh, you know one-to-one and we asked for a 50 pound donation towards the eight week sessions and the charity pays the rest the charity picks up the rest and pays the rest and we've started asking local businesses we do, we've done a thing called support a man campaign and we're saying every 150 quid you donate will put someone through eight weeks of therapy you are supporting that man and you could saving their lives so we've started a support a man campaign and already um a local business just down here from me where i am in tobacco factory called rebel tv donated um 500 pound the other day and they, they basically put three men through um eight weeks of therapy at talk club so they're they're the first ones to do the support man. love so that business out there and you want to and you want to support a man um email hello at talkclub.org and you can uh, help support a man so this is what we're doing we're going right okay let's give back what can we do and this is one thing and we're going to launch this nationwide i'm going to get business to help pay and support and then they can help pay for men and um you know they can come in and, and support them so that's that's the idea yeah and you raised such an important point and this was a couple of episodes ago we had uh hannah bailey who is ex-police she works with police officers in terms of well-being and that kind of stuff uh, and she was saying exactly the same actually awareness is fantastic but absolutely useless unless she's actually leading somewhere and and i think that's where where knowing our place in the food chain has helps and me not being solution focused actually what kind of scared me to get into that role of signposting to wonderful people like you is the fact that there was all this awareness but actually people were still unsure of how to engage in stuff so you can have all of these initiatives and solutions but unless you engage absolutely nothing changes and i think that's certainly the fear when it comes to the student work that i get involved with in terms of social media for example we encourage people to be open and to share and all these kind of different things but they're kind of sharing into the ether there's you're not catching them with a solution or inspiration so it becomes this kind of mosh pit of despair. I feel I feel rubbish today. Well, so I feel rubbish today too. And it just compounds the issue. What I love is the fact that you've built a solution around a challenge with engagement. Yeah. And literally, like I got my cap to you. That's amazing stuff. So are you truly being heard in life and in business? And think about that genuinely. If the answer to that is no, then you found the right event. If you want to give yourself that boost personally and professionally, come along to find your voice live. This is will change your life. It's, this will be the game changer that you've been looking for. It provides me with the confidence in myself to prove to myself that I can do it. I can get up on stage. I can speak. There's absolutely nothing to be nervous about with these events. It's very, very open, very, very relaxed. It helped my confidence go from here at the beginning of the day to here at the end of the day. Hey everyone, my name is Nick Elston. I'm an inspirational speaker on the lived experience of mental health and a transformational speaking coach. I'm the founder of Forging People and Find Your Voice Live is our flagship event where we cross the boundaries of personal development, mental health, transformation and public speaking. Your ability to speak, to deliver any message to any audience with clarity and power and emotion will have an ultimately defining impact on your success by your own definition of that really subjective term. Speaking is life, speaking is business, speaking is education, and that's the thing that we focus on most. What I find is that people are here for many, many different reasons. Some people do absolutely want to be a stage speaker, a professional speaker. Some people want to be able to represent their business uh, or to lead a team or inspire a movement or create a story. But even actually, some people want to be here just because they want to feel they want to be heard at home. Maybe they, they don't feel their opinions being heard, that they can't say yes to the things they want to say yes to or no to the things they want to say no to. Again, this is where personal development meets mental health, meets public speaking to create a real positive impact. At the end of Find Your Voice Live, you will walk away with 
Massive confidence around delivering your message. The ability to stand up and deliver means you will enhance your self-esteem in an amazing way. You will also have the skills and tools and tips and techniques to not only deliver a presentation, but to structure a presentation, to find your audience, to be able to deliver emotional storytelling to help your audience feel and make them want to be part of your tribe, make them want to be part of their, your following and really tune into what you're truly about, to truly make yourself heard in life and in business. If you're sat on the fence, if you're still not sure, take the model that I use, say yes, worry about it later, and I'll make sure that you're looked after brilliantly. Myself and my team will make sure that you have an amazing day, a transformational day that will have the desired positive impact that you want to achieve. Yeah, and I think that's the problem. We were hearing too much of that. We keep hearing this, oh, ask twice and, mm. you know, ask again. And and I'm like, the trouble is, you ask twice, you're going to say the same answer twice. Um, are you okay? Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Same answer. How are you out of 10? Now, that's a different answer because you've got to think about that. And everyone does it. When you say, how are you out of 10? They stop, they look to the sky and they sort of think, oh, actually, yeah. Oh, what is my number? Oh, and they're like, oh, I did it the other day with a meeting. I was five people on the screen, and and, and I, before we started the meeting, I said to them all, "How are you out of ten? And people are, like, oh, I'm a seven, I'm an eight. And this one person went, actually, I'm a four. And uh -huh. all you can see all the staff go, oh, okay, didn't know that. Um, and it was amazing because it was like she was a fair play to them. They they owned it and said, "Yeah, do you know what? I'm I, I'm 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 not great. I'm a four at the moment. Mm. You know, I'm doing my job and I'm doing okay, but I'm not great." And I just thought, well, if you asked her twice, she'd have said, "Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm all right." You know, that would. <laughs> so you're not getting anywhere, and that's why, like we said, I think how you out of ten is is fantastic at starting real conversations and really knowing how people are really doing um i do it with my eight-year-old my eight-year-old checks in with me every morning i'm like how are you out of 10 obviously it's normally because you know he's not had any chocolate for breakfast so his numbers are like <laughs> oh it's, you know he's stood on lego or yeah. but, you know but it's good but i'm already teaching my children to go look be be self-aware understand yeah. where you're at because they haven't got that language they can't explain any no sad bad mad or you know glad so I'm teaching them to go, okay, well, the number is a really simple way of just going, okay, what what is my number? How am I, how am I doing? And you know, how can I how can I get my number to up a point? Yeah. We have spoken about the calls, we've spoken about the mission. Tell us about little Gavin. Tell us about growing up and how did you come to be where you are today? Wow, bloody hell. <laughs> that reminds me, that reminds me, and I'm gonna it sounds a bit big headed, but when I was, I was doing a session for radio at Abbey road studios and studio two. Nice. Yeah. And, and just, you said that it took me back to that moment of, I was live on radio. It was serious radio. And, um, the, the, the presenter just said, so Gavin Thorpe, tell me about Gavin Thorpe. And I was just like, oh, bloody yeah. Can you, you know, can you not at least ask me what my favourite Beatles song is or something, you know? Ask me, oh, it was such a huge question. Now, of course, you're, you're nervous anyway. You're going, um, um, I'm, I play guitar, and write songs, and I'm from Bristol. And oh. so, so, yeah. Um, well, I've, I've sort of almost jumped ahead to... Abbey Road, but um, <laughs> how did I get there? I hear you ask. I, 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 yes, certainly you can. Well, you're a counselor; you can read my mind. I'm an open book. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. I mean, um, uh, music. Music's been my big love all my life. That's been my uh, driver, if you like. Um, I've been a musician since I was about eleven or twelve, playing guitar in my bedroom, and that was the one thing that was consistent. Um, and football. Um, my love of Arsenal. I'm a huge Arsenal fan as well. So that's my two big loves at Arsenal and. Um, uh, and at the moment, top of the league, got to say, so I'm smiling, I'm happy. <laughs> so it's, good, it's good to be a gooner at the moment. I'm, I, you know, it's good. Not been so good the last couple of years, but it's good at the moment. Great um, season so far. <laughs> and so, As we record this on the 21st of September, I like to throw in in case it all nosedives. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. About. I keep saying to people, we're top of the league at the moment. We're top of the league at the moment. So I'll screenshot um, the league table and put it in for, for future prosperity. <laughs> <laughs> um 
so yeah so music and music and football have been a big part of my life and family uh my dad was a bass player in a band so he's into music and so that was that was that was sort of our bond um and yeah just growing up in bands and then at the age of 22 at sort of not given up but was a bit like oh i don't know what i wanted you know i'm 22 now have i missed it but it always feels old when you're 22 in the music industry because everyone gets signed at like 17 18 and i've been trying for ages it's you know uh, trying to get signed and 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 i started working i started running a, a rehearsal recording studio in bristol um called unit three um which we later sold to massive attack actually massive attack now run it oh, wow. their records there um and I got spotted and um, I, I got offered a publishing deal and then I got offered a record deal. So very quickly in the space of a couple of months, I went from working in a studio in Bedminster in Bristol to being in a recording studio in Los Angeles making an album. So it wow. was it was bizarre. It was bizarre. And every time I say it, I'm I'm smiling because I'm like, this happened to me. It's very, <laughs> like, it, it's, I always say it's like Willy Wonka, you know, golden ticket it was it was just a magical moment and um so I so I did all that sort of rock star life and doing albums and doing all that obviously it didn't quite work out and people always ask me should I know you and I'm like oh god that's the most horrible question I get asked all the time <laughs> and when you say when I say I've got six albums on Spotify they're like oh uh should I know you and I'm like well yeah you should but you don't so, but it's okay I've done years of therapy to get over this <laughs> and I'm finally at a place where I can I could these this is a real smile not a smile to hide the pain inside <laughs> yeah um, um but yeah i mean because because weirdly when i started therapy that was the first thing i talked about was was coming to terms with the grief of my my music career really that mm. i didn't my dreams is as much as a lot of my dreams came true obviously i i it, it, you know it was it was it was a lot of the dreams didn't come true obviously i wanted to continue and and have a career but i've had a career in music and that's been great and then i got to Funnily enough, I just posted this morning on my on Facebook. I just said, um, I'm actually quite proud of myself because people don't say that often. And I thought, no, I am proud of myself. And I'm going to tell Facebook um, <laughs> that I'm proud of myself because five years ago, I was pretty lost. I didn't know what to do. Music wasn't really going anywhere. And uh, I just thought, well, I'm I'm 38 years old. And uh, I've got two kids, which I love, and I love being a dad and a husband. And, and so that identity, I, I was happy and fulfilled. But I thought, well, professionally, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? Well, you know, I've got to probably work for the next 50 years. Um, what am I going to do? And so I thought and then I started volunteering at local charities and stuff and uh, off the record and cruise bereavement care. And I really, I liked it. And, you know, and people sort of say, oh, how could you work in bereavement? But I, I actually got a lot from it, you know, from, mm -hmm. from my own grief. My dad died 14 years ago. And, and that was a big factor for me in dealing with that grief. And so that was, so five years ago, um, I, I I was like, what am I going to do in my life? I'm, I'm, I, I felt quite lost. And I must admit, quite dark. I was never suicidal. Mm -hmm. But I felt quite dark. I felt quite low and, and really hard to find the motivation and to see the future. Like I can't see the future. I can't see me in it. I don't know where I exist in this future anymore because it was always music. And then I've, I, and that's why this morning I posted, well, within the last five years, I've become a fully qualified counsellor. I've got my own private practice. I'm a co-founder of Talk Club and co-CEO. I've released... Uh, a charity single, an EP, and an album, and have one of my songs playlisted on Radio Two. So I was like, "Wow, that's." I feel quite emotional saying that. Wow, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. So, yeah. Uh, but we don't we don't recognise the good and and the things that we do. We're very quick to remember the things that we should have done or the things that we perceive as a failure, aren't we? And that's that's an interesting one. The yeah. so the the song was "Soul to Save," wasn't it? The, the charity single, yeah, Soul to Save, which... Beautiful we, track. Again, links in the bio. Do check it out. Thank you. Yeah, it was... So we recorded that, um, again, just 
the lyrics just came just came along because I because of what I was seeing in Talk Club, and I, so that's why that soul to save. We've all got a soul to save. Mm. Suddenly, the lyrics just made sense to me, and I wrote this song. And then we were like, "Oh, why don't we do a charity single?" And then obviously, we recorded the charity single, and then lockdown happened, mm. so we had to release it in lockdown, which is a shame. But we got like you know, Fat Boy Slim and Cliff Richard got behind it, and you know, so we got some you know quite you know i you know big names behind it which is great you know for a little <laughs> charity in bristol and um you know i think it's had a ho- over a hundred thousand plays on the, on the music video and wow. um, so we raised a, raised a little bit of money but we raised a lot of awareness i mean uh, we we said the website people visiting the website went up like 800 uh, percent uh you know that month so it was amazing so you know it's not about the money for us whenever we do a fundraiser we're always like actually it's more of awareness raiser than fund Mm. because what we're about is well we want men to know what we're doing and hear about us and attend the groups so that they feel supported Mm. and help reduce suicide i mean that is fundamentally what we're about so Mm. um awareness is key but yeah it was it was amazing to to do that single and and then we did a talk club EP. So the talk club EP is out there on Spotify if you want to listen to it. Amazing. Uh, and were you ever worried about making that, or, or was it a concern of making a leap between somebody that was helping in the in the mental health bereavement space and then going into a solution focused role? Were you ever concerned about whether you could kind of protect yourself enough to to thrive in that position, or did you feel that because of your positive experience working in that space you felt it's just something you could do yeah and I think the most important thing is actually to say is there's sit there were six of us who co-founded it and I think that is fundamental and I said this to someone else who I won't name but they started a similar um uh talking men's health charity group uh, mm-hmm. at the same time and they came to me for, for advice. And I said, my the best advice I can give you or anyone is don't do it on your own mm. because it's 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 hard and it's it's a lot of work um running a charity and you need that support, like you need support in life. And so having the six co-founders was was amazing because we bounced off each other because you got to go where the energy is and not not all the time all of us have got that energy so um it was great to go right okay pass the baton now you have a go you do something and so i must admit i felt prepared personally because i i you know at that point when when we before we became a charity i, I became a qualified therapist mm-hmm. i worked in the charity sector for a good couple of years before I had experience in the charity sector and I was very aware of self-care. And so I think for me, um, yeah, I, I didn't have any problems of go, sort of transitioning into running a charity or any fear of that. Mm. And what I love about Talk Club is we're so organic. We're just, we just go with whatever. We're always going, right, what can we do next? I mean, we've got a wall there you can't see, but on this wall there, I'll quickly flip my camera around, you can see a wall of ideas. Wow. So you can Very- see they're always continually going, right, what can we do next? Okay, let's do this. And we just chuck it on the wall and then we go, right, when we've got the capacity, we'll do that one and do that one. So we're always evolving. We're never yeah. sit still going, yeah, we're fantastic and we're great. And we, we're like, no, right, what can we do next to get more men talking? Um, and so that's what it's all about. Keep moving forward, keep moving forward. But like I said earlier, sometimes you've got to stop. My dad always said, sometimes you've got to stop and smell the flowers. Yeah. I think you're right, and your dad's very much right on that front. The um, A very common question I get asked is usually by women or partners of how best can I support my husband, brother, son, because they don't really engage with me on this stuff. They won't reach out for help, potentially. How can I kind of ask them to reach out? I guess it's a double-ended question, really. From your point of view, is there any advice you can give to people that are looking out for other people, other than men in their lives, and I guess, secondly, is that something that potentially ongoing having a a female or a partner group 
to to have that space as well or do you think that's going off 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 key a little bit in terms of your main mission well there's three answers to that there's <laughs> <laughs> the first answer is when I do the training, I always say to the captains, when you put posters up or leaflets, get them in the nail bars and the hair salons. I said, because so many men come to us because their wives or mums or girlfriends or aunties or cousins have seen the talk club poster and gone, oh, there's a talking group. You should go to that. You should go. And we've had so many men turn up because of that. So yeah women are a fantastic advocate of what we do and they always talk about it but the one thing one i suppose one bit of advice is you can start using the how are you out of 10 at home with your partners mm, great so, idea so if you're sat at home and now you can see they're sat on the sofa and they're i don't want to sort of label as a stereotypical man because that's unfair but if they're sat on the sofa and they're drinking drinking again on the sofa if you like and you can see they're struggling but they don't want to talk sometimes just saying so how are you out of 10 you've got a number they don't have to go too deep they don't have to go it reveal too much when i say do you know what i just want to be left alone at the moment i'm a three all right so just leave me alone and then you know okay blind me they're three then you then the next day you check in so out of interest what you know my number's this what's your number not to say it like it make it a game, but it's checking yeah. in on each other, and then you go, look, love, you know, you've you've been a you've been a three for the last week. I'm really worried about you. You know, is is do you, do you want to go to a GP? Do you, do you want to go to a talk club? Do you you know what? Do you want some counselling? It's you can you can you can. What we don't want to do, and I've said this conversation actually the other day with someone, is the role women can play in this is not telling the man to man up. Like, oh come on, get on with it. What's the matter with you? Get out there and get the money. And uh, and and I don't mean that in a sexist way, because obviously you know that only men earn money. But I just mean that man up thing. And so I think it's really important that um, the the women can play a role in that as well, mm. and, and not making the man man up and going. Actually, this this is yeah, you're you're struggling. Let's talk about it. What's your number? How are you doing? So. Yeah, that's a really, I think women have got an important role. And the other answer to that question is I was sat with a friend the other day, at, it was Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning, we we're having a coffee and she's a fellow therapist. And she said to me, when are you going to start, you know, women, female talk clubs? And I said, turn around. And she turned around and behind her were six women sat there having a coffee at Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. I said, that's the reason why I'm not starting a female talk club because they're already doing it. It's already happening. I they mean, said, do it. They already do it. They, yeah. they, they meet up, they talk. I could see they were laughing. They could see they were crying. I overheard someone talk about menopause. You know, I, they were, they, they're, they're doing it. They're, they're connecting with each mm. other. And it's amazing. Men don't do that. We're not great listeners and we don't talk about how what's really going on for us. And that's one thing Talk Club does really well. It teaches men to listen because that the majority of the time in the Talk Club, you're listening. And we even have one, one uh, wife contact. So thank you so much. My husband's such a better listener <laughs> since coming to Talk Club. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're saving marriages as well, you know, but it's. <laughs> It's true, you know, and and obviously the whole reason why we set up Talk Club is because 70, you know, um, what is it? What's the stats now? Is it 68% of suicides are male? Wow. I think the recent stat, 68%, you know, two thirds of suicide are male. So that's why um, we started Talk Club in the first place, because men are not talking. They're not it's scary, isn't it? They're not opening up and therefore they get to the point where actually they end up taking their lives. And so one thing we are going to set up in the future, which I can talk about, is Ben is making a new film at the moment and it's called Our Kids, Our Lives. And it's about children and their mental health. And from that, we're going to set up Talk Youth Club. There you go. And let's nice. say, uh, talk Youth Club. That. That's really cool. Yeah, really so cool. we're going to get we're going to get kids starting using how are you out of ten at schools and set up talk youth clubs and so they can start talking from a young age, start opening up. And one thing we're going to launch a, a, a few years down the line, but we do want to start talk club family, so all the family can engage in this, so all the the partners and the children can engage in this. So we are very aware that this is a bigger problem, but the first and foremost 
it's men that need that attention because the stats are just so high mm. in the epidemic and we need to, we need to get men talking because they, they're the ones that are killing themselves i mean literally look we've done the sticker silence kills and it's true so that is a that's yeah. what it's about we need we need to stop the silence and let's start the conversations best way to start a conversation got my postcard how are you out of town <laughs> very good very good <laughs> no, gavin i could talk to you for hours it'd be the longest podcast episode ever so i'm gonna have to get you back for season six anyway to hear about all the cool stuff you're doing yeah too. absolutely but for now the question that i like to ask everybody that comes on the show is and now the MC of the O2 Arena in London, 20,000 people have paid their hard-earned money to come and hear you do your thing. What are your many things? Uh, <laughs> I'm just about to call you to the stage. You're sat back in the green room and your walk-on music kicks in, that song that motivates you, that lifts you, that gets you at peak state. Gavin thought, what would your walk-on music be and why? Uh, I'm laughing because I can hear my dad uh, it, we're loving this answer. Um, it's got to be Eye of the Tiger. It's got to be. <laughs> It's got to be. Uh, it's got to be rocky, isn't it? It's yeah. got to be. But, I mean, nothing else to walk on to. to <laughs> Love that, Gavin. Four, be, okay. Give it up. Big round of applause. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being such an amazing guy. I lo genuinely love today's conversation. Thanks for giving up your busy time to be with us and to share your pearls of wisdom. Uh, really do appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I'm checking out as a nine, definitely. Awesome. That's always a good start, isn't it? If we can leave people better than when we found them, that's always a good place to be. So that's really cool. Uh, for everybody else, I hope you've enjoyed it too. I'm sure you have. Please do hit like, follow, subscribe, all that jazz. Whatever it's going to take to get you back to the next episode, which is with the very wonderful Blair Palmer, a people and leadership expert, uh, the rights for HR publications and stuff. Lots of interesting insights into that world. So stay tuned. Uh, be well, be happy, take care. See you soon, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.